Hi, everyone. Um, thanks very much for joining this webinar, the last for the year, um, at least uh, the last in English. Um, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us from uh, wherever you are. I know it's uh, still early in some places. Um, it's five o'clock here at Paris time, so we're going to get started. It's a long, uh, a long feature overview of uh, the Aurora release and the roadmap for 2021. Um, so hopefully everybody can hear me okay and, uh, and can see me okay. So those are usually the first checks. But before we go on, just so you know, um, if you're not able to, if some of your colleagues are not able to join this, uh, you'll be able to to see this um, um, to see this on on the on our clickdata.com uh, website support online slash webinar, um, and you'll also be if you register for this event, you'll also receive a uh, an email with a recording or a link to the recording uh, after this. Um, all right. So I don't see anything here that is stopping me from going. I'm not getting any signs that the audio is bad. I guess it was resolved. That's great. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's talk about the agenda. The first uh, topic is Aurora release 2020.10. Uh, That's the last release of this year. Um, typically, we release once a month, um, but we adjust the calendar based on availability. Uh, vacations and uh, and and also the extent of the work to be done, and then I want to talk a little bit about the product roadmap 2021. And I have uh, Sri Neve, who some of you know, uh, is moderating, and uh, he'll uh, he'll be able to join uh, uh, the discussion a little bit later if there's any questions. Uh, just before we get started on those, um, I just wanted to give uh, most of you some of most of you I believe would be uh, customers of ours interested in seeing what's coming up um, and some of you that may not be customers uh, who you know uh, click data is a business intelligence platform complete with data and uh, data visualization and a few other things uh, some of you may know um, here are some usage metrics that perhaps are interesting for you um, on the dashboard side there is an average of about 110 dashboards per customer of ours. Uh, one of uh, our accounts has just over 4,000 uh, dashboards in that one account. Um, the average database size is three gigabytes per account. Uh, our highest one has over four terabytes. Now, I do know that um, we do compress the data quite a bit. So three gigabytes is actually a lot of data in, in our world. So um, in terms of data refreshes, the average um, is approximately uh, 2,900 per month. Um, one of our accounts is, is refreshing data, um, hitting close to 900,000 uh, times a month. So that's a lot of refreshes per, per, per day, per hour, per minute. Um, our API call, um, for those that are using it, it averages about 3,000 calls uh, per month. Uh, but we do have some customers uh, utilizing the API extensively. Uh, hitting uh, 278,000 calls a month. In terms of um, number of dashboard and binder views, we approximately uh, average 3,100 views per month. Um, this is the average across all accounts again. Uh, the highest account has just shy of 600,000 views per month. And the chart that you see um, with the little avatars there, uh, those are the number of sessions uh, since 2015, when we started click data um, of people logging in. Um, so, you know, the number of online users active on the application has is, is been growing substantially um, uh, on a per daily uh, average. So I thought that some of you may be interested in knowing some of these metrics. I, myself, uh, we monitor uh, other metrics other than these uh, on, a, on an hourly and daily basis, but I thought it would be interesting to share uh, our growth over the last five years uh, with you. Some of you have been with us for a very long time. So on to Aurora. Um, Aurora was called because of the Northern Lights. Um, I've, I've, I'm originally from, from Canada, as some of you may know. Not that we have Northern Lights in Toronto. We can hardly see the sky there. But I have had the chance to actually go to a few of the Scandinavian countries and uh, had the chance of seeing it. And it is a beautiful sight. And this release has been um, a long time coming. We've been working on this for really a long time. It's a lot about security. 
Um, and one of the first features is about user roles. Uh, the other reason why Aurora was cool is because the background was really cool. So that's yeah, that's how we decide things. Um, user roles is is an important feature, one that you need to to understand to manage your accounts um, as well as to secure your accounts. Um, roles are replacing the concept of the viewer editor admin license that we used to have. Um, Right now, you can license a user. You're giving a user a license. You know that very early on, we uh, strayed away from the traditional model uh, by Tableau's and the other guys of what is an editor, what is a viewer, and you pay more for an editor, you pay more or less for a viewer, and so forth. We just had a very um, single licensed approach to this, mostly because we are, we had a lot more features than, than those guys in terms of data, the data sides. So editors and viewers really didn't make uh, sense anymore, uh, you know, from an early stage. So the concept of license right now is: can this user does this count towards your number of licenses that you've that you've purchased that you use? Uh, and then you define roles. Um, so each user will define a, a role, a single role per user, and that role defines all the things that that user can do. So you, you see here on the screenshot, you will have a new uh, roles menu under security. Um, and in there, you can define uh, the roles you want. Um, on December 8th, when we convert this to you, you will see these roles automatically set up uh, for you um, with the one-to-one -one with the equivalency of what we have today of your editor admin. So you will see something at the top called account administrators and in brackets system. This is a role that you cannot delete. This is uh, a, a role that uh, the account owner will be in there for sure, as well as any other administrators that you would have that are that have that that the same definition. Administrators are the old admin that were not owners, editors, and viewers. And then we had to split off things. If you gave uh, some editors API access or data by email, we created those additional roles. Not everybody will see those though but you'll definitely see at least four of them, which is account administrators, administrators, editors, and viewers. After that, it's up to you to decide what those roles are. And once you edit them, you'll see a little bit of a checkbox similar to what we see here, uh, where you can fine tune exactly which module, uh, which screen they can access um, in with that role. Okay, And there's data, visualization, automation, and then there's a few others as well all the way uh, to even removing uh, the help button if, if you'd like uh, to do so. Um, assigning roles, uh, you can do it via the user side, obviously. Um, you, you load up the, the, the user in the administration screen and you, you assign the role, or you can also import them in, in batch or using our API as well. So folders is a great way for you to organize your dashboards, your data sets, tables and views, um, as well as uh, coming up soon, data data flows as well. Um, until today, you've seen personal uh, folders which contain uh, your objects only. Um, so they will be truly private. Um, and this is something very important, personal folder. Uh, there is no super um, super admin of click data no longer with the concept of, of uh, roles. Uh, so personal dashboards are truly yours and yours alone. Um, and team is anything that you'd like to to put into team shared folders. Uh, sorry, team folders. I should refrain from using the word shared. Um, but if you have a dashboard that you'd like to share with somebody and not particularly with an entire team, you can just add the users to the security of your dashboard on your personal folder, and they will see it on the shared folder, uh, on their shared folder, not yours, obviously. So it's, it's a bit like a... Um, who shared stuff with me, you'll go there, you click on that, and you'll see all the dashboards or data uh, data tables and views that people have shared with you uh, from their personal uh, folders, which is uh, obviously not exactly the same as team folders, um, but uh, we'll get into the fine, uh, into the team folder security in just a second. So again, just to clarify personal folder security um, is now are truly private, uh, only the owner will have access to them. Um, there is no super admin 
any longer. Um, if you wish to share stuff from there, you either have to make a decision to add individuals uh, to the, the, the item, the dashboard or the binder or so forth, and they will see it in their shared folder, or you'll have to make a decision to put it into a team folder to share with the rest of the company, okay? Which will take us into the team folders. Uh, team folder security is really where the biggest impact of this uh, of this change has, has come into um, in terms of security. Uh, team folders uh, can be created by anyone that have the permission to do so using the role feature that we described just, just before this. So if you have that permission in your role, you can create new team folders. Um, you become the owner of that team folder and you can do, add other users to that team folder that they themselves can see the folder and access the folder therefore, um, or even edit the folder, meaning they can create some folders, they can add objects to it and delete objects from it, okay? But the biggest change here is not in that piece. Uh, that was already kind of pre-established before. Uh, the biggest change is the fact that items inside the team folder now have to obey the team folder security, meaning, um, and I, ha I do have some examples here, uh, hopefully they'll they'll come through right here. So uh, taking to an example where Bob um, has access to folder one to view, for example, and it has a dashboard inside that folder that Bob also has an access that it, uh, a dashboard that it can also view or edit or what have you. Uh, in that case, Bob will see dashboard X, but dashboard Z, which is folder two, which Bob does not have permission to. Even though Bob may have been, you know, the editor or uh, the owner even of that, because he was placed into that folder, Bob will no longer have access to this. So this is similar if you use uh, Google uh, Drive or uh, uh, Dropbox um, or even Windows operating system or Linux, where uh, you created a file but you got copied into a folder that you no longer have, uh, that you don't have permission to access, um, you basically lost your access um, and you have to ask the owner of the folder to, to give you access to, to those items. Um, then I'm just gonna go through a couple of other case uh, scenarios here. Uh, mixed security. Um, the advantages of having this system, um, this is an advantage here as far as I can see, which is you can give Bob and Alice access to folder one and place two objects, dashboard X and dashboard Z in it where uh, Bob can see dashboard X, but not dashboard Z, and Alice can see dashboard Z, but not dashboard X. And this will work beautifully because then you don't need to create multiple folders. You can create, for example, folder one, which is sales, and then have two dashboards where different members of the sales team will be able to see only their dashboard. So this case will continue to work um, and uh, as, as originally designed and as it was before. And the final example that I'd like to give is, again, it's, it's actually, it's not a final example, it's just reiterating what I just said, which is to say that uh, if, uh, again, Alice um, creates a dashboard and uh, Bob removes Alice, for example, let's say Bob is the owner of folder one uh, and owners can change the security and removes Alice from the folder that Alice loses access, even if she is the owner of the dashboard, okay? So um, the dashboard is not lost, of course. Um, it's just that somebody has to make a decision whether Alice can see dashboard X again or not. Um, and that someone needs to be the, the, uh, the owner of folder one. So this type of security is actually gonna prevail, and prevail throughout um, all of click data. Um, so whether you're on the dashboard designer and you say, well, I'd like to connect to this table and this table is inside a team folder, you must have access to the team folder to see that table, okay? So uh, it is a parent inherited security. Uh, the parent, you must have security for the parent to see the, to see the children containing that in that uh, folder, okay? I expect that to be uh, a potential big change. We try to minimize this as much as possible. We will be running uh, migration scripts on, uh, on December 8th to make sure that whatever securities you have today on dashboard X in this case, or on the children, that uh, you will have them on the folder as viewers so that it'll minimize uh, any impact you have 
um, things should continue to work exactly the same way um, as, as they are today. But going forward, you will need to uh, make those decisions either using users or teams to uh, give uh, security to the right level um, to your users. All right, so let's talk about menus. Um, if you recall uh, a couple of releases ago, we took our own menu from the top of, of, the, of Click Data and we created the hamburger menu uh, top left. Um, and, uh, and we did that not because it was cool to do, um, but because we wanted that top menu to be yours, in fact. Um, we wanted you to create your own navigation. After all, we have, um, you know, basically an entire portal at your disposal that, you know, you can white label, you can make it your own. And uh, so we basically created this menu system and you can create a, a, a up to three levels of, of menus and submenus. Um, you can state that the parent, for example, in this screenshot that you see, finance uh, could actually, if you click on it, could take you to a dashboard. You could also do nothing. Maybe it's just a, a holder for the, for the submenus below. Um, you can display binders, dashboards, HTML pages, and a few other features that are coming in the future that we'll talk about a little bit later on. So now you basically can, um, you know, create your own uh, menu. Uh, I'm going to give you some uh, examples of things you can do with it. Uh, the menu will follow the theme of the application. Uh, you can obviously put a, a you know, a dashboard, uh, click on something and have a dashboard. You can create these type of menus uh, with, with children, etc. Again, up to three levels as shown here. This is level one, level two, and level three. Um, you can put uh, other um, websites, URLs, PDFs, anything, again, that is accessible and that allows you to embed into uh, an external website. So again, uh, two words of caution, first of all, if you're embedding something from another uh, server on the internet, um, that server must allow you to embed that into um, iframes, into frames. And secondly, um, it must be HTTPS. We will not allow uh, non-HTTPS content to be embedded. Um, you can uh, obviously put other things such as PDFs and things like that, again, following those same rules. Um, the home page. Uh, the home page is the initial page that you and your users will will see when you log in. Um, today, if you recall, we have this thumbnail uh, kind of layout, kind of a, a, a look-alike iPad, kind of big um, thumbnails, uh, which are hard to 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 see exactly what dashboards they refer to. Um, the home page is now something that you'll be able to uh, configure yourself in the system menu on your account settings. And there's a lot of options here. Um, obviously empty is, is the easiest option of it all. You see nothing, you see basically just your menu at the top and that's it. Um, you'll show the quick start. This is what we usually show to new users so they know where to, to get to uh, with a few boxes to say, this is where you create dashboards, this is where you start the data. You then have two options, one which is all dashboards and binders visible to the user and all favorite dashboards and binders for the user. So in both cases, um, you know, they will see uh, this new screen that I will show you just after, or I can actually go there right now. It is our new uh, home uh, screen, um, slightly mo modified. I believe we had a, a, a minute change before this to make this a drop down. But all in all, it's a much simplified version where you have all your dashboards here and binders. Uh, you click on one or touch one and you'll see basically this uh, with or without the top toolbar at the top. Um, here you can go full screen, you can export and print from here like you could before. And then in the next release, we'll uh, put back the slideshow button right about here. So we will slideshow all your dashboards in full screen mode uh, from, from this screen, okay? So this is the new, um, the new kind of thumbnail viewer, if you will. Um, there's a few other things you can do. You can say, no, just show one binder or show one dashboard or just show an external URL on your home page directly. So those are options that you can do as well. Uh, so it becomes very similar to, um, you know, the menu system that you saw previously that you log in 
And yeah, you'll have your menu at the top or not. You, you may choose not to have a menu, but you'll see right away either a, a dashboard, a binder, a PDF, a URL, etc. Okay. There's one last option here, which can be very interesting, is uh, this last one here, user's first menu item with content. So assuming again um, that you go uh, and you set up a menu system, um, let's say this one here, and um, let's say that uh, profit and loss here is your first uh, clickable content that will show you a dashboard, let's say. Um, what you want is you want all your users um, to uh, log in and get that first dashboard, whatever that is. Um, one thing that potentially is important to, to understand as well, which I believe I neglected to mention before, is that you can actually create multiple menus for different users is I think a very important part. So um, you can actually have you know, a, a team of users using um, a sales menu and uh, another team using a different, uh, let's say, logistics uh, uh, menu. And you can configure that. Uh, when they log in, most likely you want them to see the first option of that menu. Maybe you can call that option home. You can rename the menu here and say, this is my home. And when they click on it, um, they'll see something here that you define as, as being your home. So on your account settings, on the home setting, uh, you can say just pick the first option on that menu. And when they log in, the first item on that menu will be selected by uh, for them. Okay. So again, a lot of, a lot of features here. Uh, as always with click data, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff. Um, uh, so you know if you have any issues, Please do not hesitate to reach out to the team, myself included. Um, love to explain the new features in more detail if you need to. Um, let's keep moving on out of menus and uh, home page and talk about open ID integration. Um, some of you may uh, know that we have offered open ID last uh, last release. Uh, we've made some improvements thanks to to. Uh, a good partner and customer of ours um, and, and improved upon this uh, substantially, um, so much so that we actually now uh, offer a seamless integration with Office 365, which is really good. So you'll, you should see some new features coming along the way of Office 365 integration. Um, some of you may be applicable to existing accounts, others not. but. Um, to integrate security, for example, users with your Office 365 is dead easy uh, right now with this integration. On the data side, uh, changes and features that we've done. Um, one of the things, simple things that we've done here um, is uh, we didn't have a lot of time to sprint to advance on some of the other stuff due to the uh, security work that we've done uh, just as I explained uh, just now, uh, but we are able now to roll back any uh, historical version of the data that you have, and you will just create a new uh, table directly onto your account, uh, a one-click approach, as opposed to using other systems that we had before, including the API. On the dashboard and widget side, uh, some small features again, uh, the team was occupied with, again, uh, uh, with the new security protocols, um, but we are able to manage custom uh, map widgets a lot easier. We now have uh, the ability to update the JSON, GeoJSON, to download it, to rename it, to delete it, etc. So your custom maps, um, uh, the ability to manage your custom maps is, is definitely has definitely improved. Um, we have this great new feature, which is the persisting filter selection during a session. Um, what this does is a little switch you'll see on some uh, input or all the input uh, widgets that we have, and that is to persist selections. What that will do is basically if you enable it, um, Click Data will remember uh, the filter selections that you've done on your dashboard. So that if you navigate away to another dashboard, uh, a few other dashboards, and then eventually you come back to this dashboard, the filter selection will reset will will um, will still be there uh, based on what the user um, has selected. Um, this is what we mean by persisting. You will stay there until your session is is disconnected. At which point you'll you'll go back to the defaults that you set on your filter input widgets. Um, this is applicable to the filter panel, the drop down, calendar input widget. The, 
basically anything that is an input widget. Now, this will take us into the next feature. Um, I know I'm talking a little bit about roadmap already, but since we're talking about this, which is uh, today to pass a parameter from one dashboard to the other, you must actually specify which uh, items you want to pass to the next dashboard. Um, in, in the next release, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, launch this new feature, which is you can actually tell the input widget to look at, uh, to see if there's any persisted selections already, so you don't have to pass all those parameters. And this will be ideal, for example, if you have two dashboards on the same binder, that the second dashboard in the binder will just pick up the filter from the first one, so you don't have to keep asking the user for that, or you don't need to uh, do some other magic to make that happen. On the interface, um, now some of you may have seen this very, very slightly happening over the last uh, two releases. We have a, um, you know, we try not to change things too much uh, as to not cause an impact, but um, we are switching a framework which is a lot uh, more durable, a lot faster to develop, a lot easier to test as well. So you'll start seeing one of the biggest things we've done is uh, actually remove uh, the bottom uh, bar that uh, appears when you select multiple items. Uh, that is now replaced by this top uh, button here. In fact, all your controls will be here, or if you're looking at the row level, you have everything you need on this on these buttons here. OK, um, we've also tried to optimize this based on feedback over the last months um, on how to make this user interface um, more usable. Um, the user settings has also been refactored. You'll notice that it's a lot simpler, uh, cleaner design as well. Um, you've seen dashboards and binders uh, used to be in the same uh, navigation screen, it is now split. And now there's there's a good reason for that. Binders uh, will contain not only dashboards going forward, but they're going to contain HTML um, pages, if you'd like, but also um, the new module that we're going to launch uh, next year. Again, we'll talk about that in just, in just a, a few minutes, which is reports and also panels. I'm not going to talk about panels just yet. But um, reports is in there. I think I've ruined a surprise there, but panels is something that's coming soon, uh, which I think will be very cool as well. Um, so yeah, binders will have its own menu system, uh, its own sorry, its own management screen, and also its own folders. Uh, what's going to happen on December eighth is today you'll have binders and dashboards in the same folder structure. What we're going to do is uh, you'll see binders, uh, the menu here. And if you click on it, you'll see the same folder structure as long as that folder structure had binders in them. Um, otherwise, we're not going to create folders, uh, empty folders. So we'll only create and duplicate exact the same name folder uh, on binders if there was a binder inside of it. Um, so that's binders and folders. Um, you'll see also a new dashboard and binder viewer uh, with uh, lock cleaner design as well. Um, it's, it no longer does this modal uh, dark background um, interface that we used to have. And uh, also, you'll notice that uh, tables and views is a new name for the data screen. Uh, you know, data is data is data, so we needed to differentiate a little bit between the different types of data. You'll see also the new icons. Uh, they're all standardized. You'll notice that they don't have um, the, the icons no longer have the icon of the connection that they came from. So, um, but you'll still see it uh, underneath the name. And in the next release, we'll have a mini icon of the connection somewhere uh, just down the line, uh, the row line, uh, to give you that, that feedback of where this data came from, which connection. But this would be the connection name that you will see here. Um, um, and again, not if it's a local file, obviously, but if it's, let's say, SQL Server and you named your connection SQL Server Master Database, you'll see SQL Server Master Database here, so you'll know where it came from. Uh, so yeah, that's what that's what it looks like. Uh, and like I mentioned before, you will see a little um, icon here with the, with the connection name if there is a, a connection associated with it. You also see the alerts if uh, this data did not load properly last time or uh, some rows were skipped or something, you'll see also some alerts here as well on that, okay? 
refactor teams and users. I'm not going to go through this. I'm going to skip this quickly as uh, you know, we're already halfway marked through the webinar. So I'd like to take the next 15, 20 minutes just to talk about the click data roadmap. Um, but maybe I'm taking a small pause here just to check um, if Shree, if there's any uh, uh, questions or discussion items, this would be a great uh, point in time for us to talk about the Aurora release. Um, anything? Yeah, Thelma. Uh, thanks a lot for the walking us through the features on Aurora. Pretty exciting. Um, we had a few questions along the way, so I think it's a good time for you to take a pause and just uh, let me ask those questions and you could help us with those questions. The first question we have is uh, around different uh, folder security. Um, what happens if a particular person in the organization leaves? Uh, how can the admin or the owner of the account go ahead and delete that particular person? And what happens to the objects that the particular person is assigned to? Yeah, that's a great question. So that, that obviously uh, took long time to discuss how we manage this new licensing method versus the lack of roles. So it's important to understand that a user can be created in click data and that user uh, may not uh, be have an active license and may not even have a role. What does that mean? That the rule, uh, A, you have a user, um, but they cannot log in, they don't have a role, so uh, they can't do anything in the system. Um, but the good news is that you didn't activate their license, so the it doesn't count towards your license uh, quantity. Now, if that person is leaving, now assuming that you do create a user, you give them a role, you give them a license, they're active. Assuming that person is leaving temporarily, uh, maternity leave, uh, paternity leave, whatever, um, you can just uh, switch off the active license. It frees up a license. The objects are all still there under the user's name. You know this person is going to come back. So when they come back, you just make the license active again. So that's an easy way to secure your account for somebody that's uh, leaving the the you know the the use of the system for a, a long time. Now, if that person is leaving permanently, you delete the user. Now, when you delete the user, you will know that this user is the owner of objects, whether the object is a dashboard, a table or even a folder, uh, you will ask you to pick somebody else to be the new owner of those objects, okay? You will not be able to delete that uh, user until you reassign the ownership to somebody else. Okay. Sorry, it was the long way to answer your question, but I just figured I would mention- No, that was quick, though. Uh, thanks a lot for answering that. The second question we have um, is around the usage of menus. Uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, what external links can someone embed onto the menus or how that can enhance the user experience for the users that the menus would be designed for? Yeah, again, we had a lot of customers asking us, you know, um, you have like a, a near portal there for your users. Uh, if I could only customize, um, instead of this being your menus, you know, dashboards, table and all that, if I could make these my own menus, um, I could make this my own portal for my viewers. So um, you can really customize anything you want here. You can put uh, HTML URL references. So for example, if you have links to your own company portal uh, or a timesheet tracking system that is web-based that allows you to embed itself uh, uh, your own internal uh, development, you can definitely incorporate all that here. Um, and, and put that in there. If you have forms that people will want to use and and uh, and uh, you know fill out or save uh, or have access to, again, it's up to you to define what content you want here. Obviously, we designed this to incorporate a lot of our dashboards and uh, binders and things like that. Uh, but you know, it could be um, it could be for you. Now, one thing that will take us into the next release is the concept of. The, uh, the form data form widget. Um, now the data form widget uh, for those that are not aware of it is the ability to include a, a, a widget um, in your dashboard that accepts input and saves the data onto a table. So it becomes um, click data now becomes um, a little bit transactional in that aspect. Uh, it avoids you to use things such as Google Forms or Formstack to quickly ask user for input. And as soon as they save any data, even if it's on the same dashboard, will be refreshed automatically. Um, so 
you could also build interesting things, right? You could also build here an employee form. Uh, you click a menu, which is vacation or timesheet or something like that, and display dashboard that is just a single data form that you can uh, save to a table and uh, report off. Thanks, Silmo. I'm going to take two more questions. Uh, I know we do have a few more items to cover today. Uh, so the th Thelma second last question we have is regarding uh, user roles. Is there a way now to define user roles in such a way that the user can only access live links but don't have access to the web app? That is correct. So um, you will see uh, as one of the permissions um, that you can set will be under uh, general settings is uh, mobile app access and web app access. Um, so um, if you do not have web app or mobile app access um, and you still share the live link, you can still see the live link. So that is um, um, that is the way basically that you will stop people from logging in to click data, but still have access to the live links. And the last question I want to take on um, is regarding API. With the changes to the object security and folder security, would there be some changes to the API and would it be updated at the same time? Uh, the folder security uh, and the API changes. So the API change does not follow um, does not follow the normal security in that sense where um, it does not if you have access to the PDF, that's the first thing. So you must have a client ID and a client secret to access the API. And then obviously you have to have the object security level to access the data set. So the API does not follow uh, the regular folder structure security, even if that data set or, or dashboard is inside a team folder. Um, now, this is true if you use one of the API methods, which is the um, uh, system credentials. Um, if you're using the other OAuth 2, which is client credentials or basic authentication, then in essence, you are a user and you will follow the same security uh, approach. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Elmo. We do have a few more questions, uh, but just for everyone to know, we would be writing a detailed blog about all the features that Thelma has spoken about. So a lot of these questions would be addressed there, and we would be sending you links to the blogs as well. And if uh, we haven't taken any other questions so far, uh, we will reach out to you by email, and we'll answer those questions later on. Uh, thanks, Thelma, for answering the questions. Yeah, not a problem. All right, so I'm I'm gonna find my slide back on the the roadmap for 2021. So um, again, Aurora uh, was really the foundation in many ways. It was the framework that we are replacing. Um, we estimate to be close to 75, almost 80 percent done with the framework update. Um, there's a few items, uh, schedules, and and uh, the support ticket section of Click Data that are left to do. Um, but that should be done fairly quickly. Um, but it also laid the foundation in many other areas um, at the very infrastructural level for us to, to um, move a, a lot faster in other developments. So I'd like to talk to you about some of these new developments that are coming online. Uh, one of them is the hybrid data warehouse. Again, um, we've tested this with, uh, with three partners and three clients. Um, which were very adamant about having their own uh, infrastructure to host the data. And, um, and we always said early on that, you know, we, we want to be a full service company uh, uh, and provide a full service to all our customers. But we also understand that if a customer has the resources and the know-how to maintain their own private cloud or, or cloud system or their own infrastructure, this should be, um, you know, capable of, of hosting their own data. Um, again, as a reminder, we host data in over six countries at this point in time um, using Microsoft Azure. So wherever Microsoft Azure is present, we can launch um, and spin up a data warehouse for you in a few minutes. Um, but having said that, if you want to uh, truly own the data and have the, you know, the keys to the database server, um, and if you uh, open the channel of communication between our application on the cloud to your database, we can actually just use your database. So whether you're using Amazon or Azure or Google or your own infrastructure, if you have a SQL Server 2019 compliant uh, database, uh, 
we will be able to apply the right patches and, and uh, scripts to run uh, click data directly onto your data. So whenever you load data, the data is actually loaded onto your database. Um, the pricing conditions uh, are going to be uh, uh, coming out soon in January. Um, but obviously, as some of you may know, this has an impact on our terms of service. It has an impact on GDPR, uh, California data protection, all that stuff. It is now up to you to hold all those things. We no longer even become a processor of that data to a certain extents. So um, things will change if that is the case. But I just want to let you know, this is a great um, uh, opportunity for, for anybody that's thinking of just, uh, that is having issues, you know, selling this out and saying, hey, you know what? We really need to, to keep the data in there. Or maybe you guys have some downstream processes that are quite heavy and need to have the data closer to those downstream processes rather than us. So that um, is fine as well. The infamous data flow is, uh, has been on development for, for a long time. We're loving this feature so much and this is going to, to, to really change the game for us. Um, but it is a huge feature and you know, with, uh, with some of the developments and the COVID thinking, uh, taking place, uh, delays were inevitable, obviously. And so we, uh, we're we running late on this. Um, I'm not afraid to admit it, but we also want to do it right. So um, it's the, the work that has been done to date has been amazing. It's using the new framework. Um, so we had to take a little bit of a, a step back. Um, we didn't want to develop something that we had to change later on. So, you know, we're, we're back on track onto this. We're hoping to deliver it earlier than Q2, but, um, you know, right now the promise stands at Q2. Uh, again, the data flow is an awesome end to end. Uh, you'll be able to do a, a lot of data operations and save them as uh, static tables, split tables, uh, do machine learning uh, algorithms on the on the split tables, create a sample, create a, a, a replicate of the data. Um, what else can you do? Um, again, um, a, a lot of things that uh, views in the current tables and views potentially are slow to cache, you'll be able to do data flows um, if you work with any um, traditional ETL tools uh, such as SSIS, you know what I'm talking about, except we're gonna take this to um, a lot further than SSIS in certain cases. Um, so that is on track to deliver this year. The data form widget, we were going to release this this uh, this release, but uh, we thought, you know, before we do that, let's make sure the security piece is done. Uh, this is obviously, uh, the first uh, time in, in click data other than the custom data feature that you're actually using um, our data warehouse as a transaction. So we wanted to make sure that um, things such as, you know, record contention and all that stuff was, was taking place. Uh, we're now at the kind of last stages. We're styling it. We're giving it the ability for you to do two columns, four columns, etc. cetera, um, whether the labels are on top or the, or the side and things like that. And we're gonna release that in Q1, um, which will give you the ability to create forms right onto your dashboards. Um, the user theme, uh, part of this new framework is that it's really easy to change uh, the look and feel. So as soon as we finish the, uh, the conversion of the remainder of the screens, you'll have a new uh, styling option. Uh, we'll start with two, a dark and a light uh, uh, theme, and then we'll add other themes, potentially even allow you to uh, build your custom theme so you can make the whole application yours. Um, so that's kind of the, the objective. This year, we're gonna offer just these two uh, themes once all the screens are finalized. Um, role level security. So today, role level security is handled by the dashboard. Um, the view uh, or table is um, has contains all the data, but it's the user parameters on the dashboard that uh, will actually determine uh, what you can and cannot see. Um, however, uh, we are thinking of utilizing the views a little bit more uh, uh, throughout the application, including the dashboard where you can export data directly from a view. Uh, but again, uh, we wanted to be careful that, um, you know, 
there's some security on it, but also uh, what you want to export may be different than what you see on the dashboard. So we've been asked to basically saying, you know, I have a table with uh, three columns, uh, but when the user clicks export, I just want to see two columns, or maybe I want to show more columns than what is shown. And you'll be able to do this with views if we can user parameterize them as well. So we're, um, we're adding user parameterization to, to views. That allows you to share that view with somebody um, and they will only see the data that even if they have access to data tables and views, uh, they will only see the data that uh, the parameter, their user account parameter allows them to, to do so. So that is very exciting for us as well. It brings a new dimension of uh, data visibility. Um, reports, uh, we've talked about that last year. I was hoping to move on this faster. Um, again, yeah, we're, we're finishing off the design uh, phase. The, the report designer is is going to be a very traditional, you know, we try to, to see different ways to make this more exciting, but reports um, are almost boring um, to do at times, but very needed. And uh, we understand its functionality, but we wanted to try to, to make it a little bit easier for consumption. Um, but you will have things such as, you know, headers and footers, groupings, detail sections, and some limited charting and interactive capability. Uh, again, reports is to be uh, something that is a multi-page typically, uh, that you scroll, that you PDF it, uh, and, you know, um, potentially print it if you don't care about trees. Um, so reports is on the deck for this year. Um, part of the refactoring of this new framework is the new scheduler. Uh, scheduler V2 is, uh, will bring new features such as the web service calls as tasks, uh, the ability to execute data flows, which is the new uh, module, um, to be able to customize the emails that get sent out. Today, the emails are very static with the thumbnail of the dashboard or the link to the data set. Um, you will have a, a more extendable uh, notification uh, template that you can work off or you can create your own. Um, the ability to put multiple dashboards onto one notification email, not necessarily having to send multiple tasks uh, to, to send emails. And then there's this concept of recipients right at the top there, which I skipped. And uh, recipients is, an, is, is a concept that we're trying to understand how we can incorporate. We understand its value. Um, the idea is that basically you will have uh, users that frankly, you don't want them to be users. They're external uh, folks, customers, partners, et cetera, but you want to send them every month some, some dashboards and reports, uh, some binders, whatever, um, but you don't want to create users for them. You, you just have their email address and you want to send it out. Now, obviously these are not uh, parameterized dashboards. These are standard uh, dashboards. And we're thinking of creating a monthly allowance of recipients that you send to these to these folks. Um, this would allow you to have, uh, you could think of them as users, but they're really just recipients of, of uh, publications. So um, they will see whatever the dashboard will, will display to them without any parameterization uh, from that. But because we also want to parameterize the, the dashboard publications, uh, we need to work out how we can allow that and still maintain um, kind of a, a secure model when we publish dashboards. Uh, we, we want you to be able to uh, pick a bunch of users, publish this dashboard to those users, and, uh, and in addition to the user parameters, maybe pass additional parameters as you go along. So all that is being worked on V2 for the scheduler. It's our next uh, big uh, thing, in fact. And uh, my apologies, I think I may have skipped a small one, account level parameters. Um, this is very similar to user and team parameters, which you have today, but these are parameters that you set at the account level. This is also going to come in quite quickly um, in, in Q1. Um, again, these are useful to, you know, again, uh, if you have general um, parameters, uh, conversion rates, uh, whatever, that you use them across multiple dashboards or views, uh, that you'll be able to use uh, these account level parameters. Um, and we've been working uh, over the last few months as well on how we can improve the export to PowerPoint templates. So we believe to have found a way to make this um, really good uh, and really cool to use. Um, 
the idea is as follows. Um, and actually, let me start by the request first. The request is, um, you know, our customers do not want to, uh, don't like the current export that we have, which is just a PowerPoint with a title, uh, no layout, uh, and just images of the widgets snapped onto the, um, the slides. Um, what we're going to do is allow you to upload a PowerPoint presentation to Click Data. Uh, you will design the PowerPoint, um, you know, any way you want with your styles, with your images, et cetera. And we're going to ask you to put placeholders where you want us to replace the data. So if the placeholders are charts, like so, or um, in the case of widgets that don't have a, an equivalent in PowerPoint or other things, um, you put in an image. And on the alternate text or description of the of the object in PowerPoint, you just put the widget name um, in, in brackets in our notation. Uh, when you export a dashboard, um, you will still have the current uh, option, but you could also select a template and we will do our best to convert uh, and replace um, these images with uh, an image of the widget. And in this case, what we're going to try to do is not replace it as an image, we're actually going to try to replace the data in the chart. So that means this um, this chart be, remains editable and it remains styled the way you've styled it. So all we're going to do is replace the data inside that wood, that uh, PowerPoint object. Um, so, you know, again, if you want to play around with it and change some data items before presentation or change the styling on the go, you can without having to be uh, re-export the whole thing again. So this is a huge feature for us. Um, it'll take our PowerPoint export to, to a new level. So uh, very excited about that one. Um, a lot of items to work out there. Um, connection broker, another feature that's coming uh, fairly soon. By the way, the PowerPoint template, uh, we're aiming more towards Q2, Q3 of this year, of 2021, sorry. Um, connection broker is something that will probably come in the Q1, Q2. Um, the connection broker is basically the ability to, uh, if you have multiple points of sale, for example, and they're all using the same database in different locations or the same uh, table, flat tables or flat files, um, and you don't want to import, uh, create, you know, assume that you have 50 points of sale, you don't want to create 50 connections, uh, 50 data views, uh, sorry, data tables, and then create a fusion between all those 50. And then if one comes along, you just have to, you know, change the data fusion, create a new connection, create a So what you actually can do now is you, you create the connection for the new point of sale and you use the connection broker to say, uh, just add the connection to this. And now your data will be linked to the connection broker, not directly to each connection. So um, as you go and refresh this data, uh, he knows it's connected to a connection broker and says, oh, okay, so I have to go look for this. Let's say it's a SQL statement. I have to run this uh, SQL statement against this, bring the data, put it in my data set. Now I have to run it against this connector, put it in my data set, and so forth and so on and so on. So basically all your 50 points of sale, um, the data is still one data table, no need for a fusion. Um, you will uh, append or update, append the data into your uh, table. Uh, using that single connection broker. Very handy feature for those that have um, uh, multiple sites uh, or multiple types of tables uh, included in there. And of course, we continue to develop our widgets and connectors. Um, on the widget side, the scorecard table is on, on deck. Period button bar input is actually half finished. Uh, we put a pause on it, and we're going to release it also on Q1. It's uh, fairly close to being finished. It's a really nice, handy way to pick months and, and years very quickly in a very graphical way. The simple table and drop-down are remakes of the current widgets we have, uh, higher performance, higher capacity, and addressing some features that we've been enabled um, to implement in the current ones. Um, which are very good features to, to, to include, but um, the code currently does not allow us to do. So we're revamping it uh, in a better way. On the connector side, um, 
We have Azure Blob Storage that will be released actually uh, next release. It's uh, it's already uh, on QA's phases. GraphQL um, is on deck as well. Podio, Amazon Seller Center, and Monday.com. Now these are just uh, a minimized list. We usually deliver a lot more on a yearly basis, but because we have so many big features uh, coming on, um, I just uh, we just committed to these uh, smaller set. But um, as the year progresses, we may be able to fit a, a, a few more um, in the in the pipeline. Now, with that, and just three minutes shy of the hour, um, I want to thank you all for watching. And uh, again, you will receive a, 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 an email with the uh, with the recap of this video. Um, you'll be able to get on, on our on our website as well. You can join the community on our social media. Uh, and again, if you have any uh, questions, again, there are emails right there, um, or some of you may even have my email or Shri's email. So please feel uh, free to contact us. Shri, um, any parting words or any questions? I'm not sure if we have a lot of time for questions, but let me know. Uh, no questions. We have addressed all the questions and any other remaining questions. Uh, we will be reaching out to the users directly by email. Um, thank you, Thelma, for the awesome webinar today. I know we have covered a lot in 2021, 2020, and there's a lot more coming up in 2021. So hopefully this release will be a big release for us. And uh, the release is set to be out on 8th of December, uh, somewhere between right. 7 p.m. UDC until 12 p.m. UDC. Uh, I hope every one of you enjoyed today's webinar and uh, enjoy the new release, Aurora. Thank you. Thank you, Sri. Thanks, everyone.